For the viewers of New York, those who were in the art world and those who were new to it, uh, the people who came into the gallery, it was like a radical experience for them. They were like, what is this? Oh my God, this is pantyhose. Oh, and sand, and you can make art with that? The material she was using was perceived as radical for many people who were viewing art in, on 57th Street at that time. I am Sengen Ngudi, and I'm here at the Tate store to reassemble one of my pieces, which is part of Soul of a Nation. And I'm uh, Linda Good Bryant, and a very good friend of Sengen's. Uh, <laughs> It's been 40 plus years uh, since I first showed her work. And I started a gallery back in 1974 called Just Above Midtown Gallery in New York City. David Hammonds said to me, you've got to see Sanga's work. And then after he and I started talking, I asked him, so when are we going to see your work in New York? And he, and he said to me, I don't show on white galleries. I was working at the Studio Museum at the time and many of the artists were saying, they won't let us, they won't show our work. And it was the combination of that and David saying he wouldn't show in a white gallery that made me say, well, I'll, I'll start a gallery because the whole thing was like, we can do it ourselves. To me as an artist, uh, it was a place to show in New York. I was from Los Angeles. We could explore, we could experiment. There was no limits, and that was unusual. It was a creative space. I mean, to me, I mean, a laboratory all, almost. It really was. Even in that very small, it was like 724 yeah, square feet. Yeah. Um, it really was about how to, to create an environment uh, that constantly provided artists an opportunity to just push, push, push their creativity, push their imaginations, try stuff that wasn't being shaped by a market but being shaped by a passion that was bubbling up from inside and coming out. And at the same time, it was provocative in a way that I think opened up the viewer to perceive other possibilities than what they were comfortable seeing when they walked in a gallery. The position of Just Above Midtown was significant in itself because you had downtown artists and then you had uptown artists. But you were able to, you know, have a confidence in showing artists that pretty much worked with abstractions and yeah. other concepts, actually conceptual art. Yeah. And so that was a place where we could do that type of thing. Reponde si vous play internal two is part of my uh, RSVP series. And much of that series has to do with me filling parts of the nylon with sand. However, um, this one here, you might say it's kind of at wit's end because they're kind of like nerve endings that are extended and stretched because of anxiety. And so that's um, what that piece kind of talks about. RSVP means to, you know, respond. So I prefer that people have their own uh, conversation with it and relate to it in their own way, bring their experiences to it. I really love found objects and, and seeing something that's messed up and kicked to the side, you know, for that thing to find another life. And ideally, that other life becomes poetic. There was a, a general belief back then, remember? The art world establishment thought that what black artists made was black velvet paintings. You're gonna show black velvet paintings. And I said, well, just come into the gallery. She had to fight people. And when I say fight, you know, there were certain white males that said, we don't want you here. Yeah, no. I mean, they said, we the do not hostile. want you here. Yeah, the art world was hostile. Yeah. It was really, really, really hostile. I mean, after about two years, they got used to uh, Jam being there. I thought the, the critics were gonna kill us. Perot was the first one out there. And he said, bold idea, but it works. And that was one of the ways of starting to get the larger art world uh, to look at the work beyond this lens of 
they're black and they only create black velvet paintings. When we were making art, uh, when we were doing what we did, it was difficult. It was difficult, not just because we didn't have material resources. You can work around that. But it was difficult because of all the doubt, uh, the doubt that you heard from family and friends and foe. Not to mention the internal voices in you that were saying, what are you doing? You can't be doing this. How do you expect to feed your kids? All of those expectations. And I certainly faced them too. That I turned down those no voices, that I turned down those can't voices, and that I kept moving forward in what was driving me to do the thing I was doing. And maybe that's one of the greatest gifts of art. Uh, those of us who imagine something and transform it into something we can share with someone else. And somehow that passion, that need keeps pulling us forward until it's done. And it's never done. Yeah, well, hopefully not.